Well, again, it's, it's uh, incredible to say, but it's true. <clears throat> Napoleon Hill himself says it. I didn't make it up that he got the formula of success that he gave to the world. He was chosen by the masters of a school of wisdom who can disembody themselves and who materialized in his study and told him he'd been under their guidance. He gave a formula of success that they gave to him to the business world, which became the foundation of the whole success, motivation, positive mental attitude world out there. Yeah, Clement Stone picked it up and put it into PMA. And what did Clement Stone say? What were some of the things that he said concerning what Hill Well, said? that was a book that W. Clement Stone co-authored with Napoleon Hill, mm -hmm. Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude. And this positive mental attitude is the secret to the whole thing because they said that our minds basically have all the power to create our own world. Well, God uh, put a power into words. Uh, they're a very important part of our life. It's how he spoke the uh, universe into existence. Uh, he created the worlds with the spoken word. And when we speak with our spoken word, we create a, in a sense, we create a life around us. And still others have simply such a negative mindset that they live a miserable life and they bring upon themselves the very negativity that they're thinking about. And along with this, brethren, it, it, it's, it's our thinking patterns. It's intricate, intricately connected. How we think has a bearing on our relationships. Getting along with ourself. Sometimes we don't get along with ourself. We don't love ourself because we fill our minds with evil thoughts. The thought that we, thoughts we have have the power to give life or death. Uh, so this positive negative, you won't find it in the Bible. Now, of course, that rings a bell with ideas like positive thinking. Because you see, the power is in our minds. And so if we think positive thoughts or if we think negative thoughts, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make us what we're thinking. And when we speak with our spoken word, we create a, in a sense, we create a life around us. And that life can be uh, a life of victory and positive things if we choose to uh, obey God. And if we, if we dabble in uh, lies, deceit, hate, uh, gossiping, tail-bearing, words of anger, pride, and all the other things associated with works of the flesh, that's the kind of world that we're going to create around ourselves. There's an unknown power, in a sense, in the, in the, in the spoken word that God has given to it. And each word comes out with a, a powerful force. You stop and think about that sometimes at some point in your life where someone has said something to you that's either encouraged you tremendously or devastated you. Maybe it's just a word or two, or maybe it was a look and a grunt. But there is power in the words that we, that we use. So the whole thing centers in self, and this is what the human potential movement is about, that we have an infinite power within us. You think of Bill Clinton. I was watching television yesterday, and he's over in, in uh, China, and he's so smooth. And with words, he's deceived so many people into thinking that he's something when he's not. He's conservative one time, and he's... So he's, he's really very good with words. And if you look down through history, men who've misled uh, whole nations, Adolf Hitler, um, Stalin, they're people that have manipulated others with the words that they've used. So this idea of you've got to love yourself, you've got to have a high sense of self-esteem and so forth has come into the church. Now that began with another man, even earlier than Napoleon Hill, from the same source, his name was Friedrich Nietzsche. Nietzsche, of course, was a primary inspirer of Hitler. It was Nietzsche who said, your problem is that you don't love yourself enough. You actually hate yourself. Everybody's born with a sense of, of self-hate. See, we, all, we have always known that pride is the besetting sin of the human race. I mean, I've been on my knees praying for, for humility, and, and thought I got it, and the next thing I knew, I was proud I'd become so humble. Uh, now, now, that's a problem that we all have. We always knew that pride is the besetting sin. But the psychologists are telling us, oh, no, it, that's not the problem. It's not that you think too highly. We all think too lowly of ourselves. Getting along with ourself. Sometimes we don't get along with ourself. We don't love ourself because we fill our minds with evil thoughts. Uh, it, well, that's not what Jesus said. No, it's anyway, not. Anyway, this was picked up by Robert Schuller then, uh, the first one in the Christian world, really, who wrote the book, Self-Love, The Dynamic Force of Success. And oftentimes, in, when Satan attacks us, he bases it on a little bit of truth. I'm going to ask this question. Is there really power in positive thinking? Norman Vincent Peale wrote that book a few years ago. 
Robert Schull wrote a book called The Power of Possibility Thinking. Proverbs does tell us this in Proverbs 23, 7, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. There is some truth in what those men have to say. Tell me, what do you think is the future of Christianity? I think everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. And that's what God is doing today. He's calling people for, out of the, the world for his name, whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world. Uh, they are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. This is fantastic. I'm so thrilled to hear you say that. There is a wideness in God's mercy. There is. Proverbs does tell us this in Proverbs 23, 7. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. There is some truth in what those men have to say. People will even use the verse, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, and say you've got to program your mind with positive thoughts. What's wrong with that? Well, you just misquoted the scriptures. Okay. That's Proverbs 23. And Solomon is giving a specific example, and he's saying to his son, you know, after I'm dead, and you're head of state, and you're out there hobnobbing with big wheels, you know, kings and, and so forth, and they invite you into a feast, and, and this man says, eat up, and, you know, fill yourself, and we'll be buddies, and we'll make a pact, and so forth. Don't believe what he says. You cannot go by what he says, by his words. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Far from telling you that you can change yourself by changing your thinking, he's warning you that you don't know what is really going on in a person's heart. And you better be very careful. And yet we use that verse all the time to reinforce the fact that if you can change the thoughts in your mind, you can change yourself, which is not even biblical. Philippians 4.8 is the, I guess, the prime uh, verse used to uh, emphasize what God wants us to do with our mind. It's the positive thinking verse, I guess, as I always refer to it as. Philippians 4.8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. The thing about that is, is that uh, if we'll do that, Satan will never win. If we'll just think about positive things all the time, the good things in life. They don't do what Philippians 4.8 says. And what we're talking about is positive biblical thinking, brethren, not merely worldly positive thinking. Satan was perhaps the, most, the biggest, most well-known positive thinker of all time. Not biblical, but simply positive in a proud, worldly, arrogant sense. Okay? We're going to also talk about other folks in the Christian church that are taking other verses and talking about how we can uh, be healthy, we don't have to be sick, and uh, how we can claim these things and have them, and in fact that we ought to do that, and if you're not doing it, you don't have enough faith. Our mind and our bodies are connected, and our thinking choices definitely do impact, according to scientists, doctors, health professionals, our, uh, our health in many, many ways. When we choose to control our thinking on the direction and power of God's Holy Spirit, we improve our physical health, our spiritual health. The cheerful thinking person, person who thinks positive biblical thoughts, and still others have simply such a negative mindset that they live a miserable life and they bring upon themselves the very negativity that they're thinking about. And along with this, brethren, it, it, it's, it's our thinking patterns. It's intricate, intricately connected. How we think has a bearing on our relationships. Getting along with ourself. Sometimes we don't get along with ourself. We don't love ourself because we fill our minds with evil thoughts. The thought that we, thoughts we have have the power to give life or death. It, it's not just simply a, a positive thinking uh, uh, a message that you're hearing. Uh, and uh, they'll say, for example, well, I don't see that how anything could be wrong with what he or she teaches because he's so positive. I don't like those words, positive and negative. You just punched a button in me, okay. uh, John. Speak. It sounds like electricity. <clears throat> it has nothing to do with morals. It has nothing to do with whether it's biblical or whether it's true or false. It's a smoke screen. 
to keep us from realizing the real issue is, is what they're saying biblical or not? Hazak <laughs>